as I drop my pencil. <laughs> How is everybody? Thank you so much for joining us today for this fun little ocean scene um, using pastel pencils. I am going to be working with General Pencil products. General Pencil has been making artist grade pigment pencils since 1889 in their factory in Jersey City. I've personally been to the factory. It is amazing to watch them handcraft, hand lay the pastel leads and all the pencils we're gonna be using today. Uh, we're also going to be using um, factus erasers. You're gonna notice I use a variety of them because they each are gonna lift different amounts of pigment uh, working with pastels on paper. You can use all types of surfaces. Um, there is tone paper, white paper, uh, grit paper even um, to grab pastels. Pastel pencils you work a little different with than if you were using stick or soft pastels. With those you basically layer, you lay one. Actually, we are gonna switch me over to my camera, please. With soft pastels, you lay one color down and then you lay another color on top of it and another color on top of it. What I love about working with the pastel pencils um, by General Pencil, the multi-pastel pastel pencils, is I can lay it down and blend several colors all at once. I can lift them partially out or fully out, depending on the eraser I'm using. You normally don't lift pastels out. Um, pastel pencils give you a lot more versatility. I'm gonna show you two or three different ways to work with them today um, that I've come up with. You normally just draw with the pigment, lay it down, blend it out. So this was one of the finished projects. Um, they're all gonna look different. I turned around and did another one yesterday. Colors seem a little bolder in this one. Depends how much pigment you lay down and how many layers you're putting down. I don't want you to stress about this. This is just supposed to be fun, relaxing, easy, learning how to play with a new medium. Besides using them um, for strictly pastel work, what's great about these pencils is they're a great mixed media tool. They can go over watercolor, inks. Um, uh, they're great little accents uh, uh, with card making, um, Zentangle, almost anything. So it's extremely versatile. And these are what they look like. Here's the 12 set, the 24 set, which all the colors I'm using today are in the 24 set. And if you only have the 12 set, we'll, you know, um, just substitute as long as it is in the same family. And then this is a 36 set. This is a nice, really thick box that has three trays in it. All right, I'm gonna get started here. First step is exactly what um, most people when they pick up pastel pencil think they're supposed to do with it. Now I am working on only 70 pound paper. I purposely did not use a real high weight or expensive paper because I really wanted to show you that these pencils are so highly pigmented that you can use them on any paper. The heavier weights are gonna hold more pigment. The gridded paper is just gonna grab it so you don't need to lay down near as much. Now I'm gonna be leaving the white of the paper in some areas, hopefully to utilize and uh, as clouds to give me the illusion of clouds. So the first one I picked up was my dark gray. And then the next one I'm going to do is my light blue. This is up in the sky. And if I layer one color over another color, it is just gonna give a slightly different color, which is actually works pretty darn cool. Looks like we applied several colors instead of just two colors in here. Now I could take a cotton ball, I could take a tortillion, I could take a Q-tip, I could take one of these little makeup sponges. 
to blend all this, but I'm just going to take my finger and I tend to go in the lighter area first and I'm doing circular motions. And if I go a little past my pattern line, I'm not worried about it. Kathy, and sorry to interrupt, but we already have a question about sharpening. So just when you have a moment, um, address possibly uh, sharpening. And then sometimes when the pencils um, have a hard time getting sharpened and what those kinds of things. <clears throat> well, you know, it's real, <clears throat> especially with pastels and charcoal, because they're both very, very soft cores. Um, it's real important to use a good sharpener. This little guy is actually the same as our three-in-one, which I personally love, or this little guy that comes in a little case if you don't want to deal with shavings. That's, that's just the clothes that it wears. The two most important things are the angle of the blade and the type of the blade. You want a stainless steel German blade and general angles all of their blades to give you the exact point that you get coming out of the packaging. You really don't want a super, super long um, tip because having being such a fragile core, it's, it's just going to snap off. Now, I purposely did not lay enough pigment down. When it won't effortlessly just blend out for you, it means that you didn't lay enough pigment down, okay? You can't go wrong, okay, guys? You can't go wrong. That's why I purposely did. And you know, less is more. I always tend to put less down because I can always add more. Does that make sense? And if you accidentally fill in all of the white of the paper, again, purposely doing this, that is what erasers are for. So don't sweat the small stuff. Okay, different erasers lift different amounts of pigment. Again, uh, all of the erasers I'm using, if you are using um, any other medium, can instantly go to the white of the paper. But sometimes with the amount I'm laying down and the paper I chose to work with, I might not get it all out. So um, it will leave a little bit of a tint which is kind of what I want. So I've got a very light touch right now. I really am just barely lifting some pigment because I got another step down the road that I'm gonna be showing you. And do you see how all this built up on it? I have a scrap piece of paper over here. I'm just taking that excess off. All of our erasers are self-cleaning. And you can take a cotton ball. I like to take a just a super soft, camel hair mop brush to remove my shavings. You don't want to be going like this because you're going to smear it. Okay. Yeah. Now it is starting to see, look over here. I can effortlessly take all this off if I just use a little more pressure, but I'm purposely not hardly touching it to the paper for starters. Okay. So we just wanna get a few hints of clouds here and there for starters. The more I do it, the more I develop it is, I'll know if I want more clouds, okay? Now I'm gonna to go to my back section of my water. For water, the water has three different colors in it. Furthest back, we're always gonna put the indigo blue, which is the darkest. And as we meet up with the wave, we're going to want it lighter. And again, I'm not, you notice how I've got some wide, some thin. I want real irregular because we don't want it to look streaked. Water, the colors just sort of ebb and flow and change depending on the current underneath them, really. We're going to do it about like that. Then I'm going to put the light blue in this section. And you can extend out further than your pattern. 
Hey, Kathy, <clears throat> some of the our um, attendees are saying that the clear it's pretty blurry. So we're wondering if we could um, just maybe. I mean, it's blurry it. when I'm putting the color down. Yeah, I think, well, just the connection and with the movement. But when you pause for a second, sometimes it does um, make it a little bit clear. But I think this is the best we're going to do. So just wanted to apologize to everyone. We're sorry about the conditions. There's not much more we can do. Um, but, uh, we can, if you just maybe pause every, you know, every few minutes just to give like a good that clear blurry feel. when I'm doing this. Yes. Yeah. The internet connection is just not great. I, I, you can just pause and then they can see the steps. I think that'll help. Okay. Well, there's your step before I blend. Okay. I'm, I'm taken back because it's super clear here for me. Now, notice when I'm blending a little bit of the lighter color, I am bringing up over the wave. Can you guys see that? See how that's not bright white anymore? Like this is white. Say yes, no, maybe so in the chat for those guys. You see how, because these are so highly pigmented, when you're drawing with it, you should see a lot of little dusting particles. Don't blow them off. That's, that's just giving you extra blending power. Oh, I see when I'm blending, my finger is just moving too fast. <clears throat> Now I'm going to do the same thing on step two. The only difference is right under the wave, instead of starting with the indigo blue, I'm going to use purple. Lay it on its side. Maybe it won't uh, be as uh, blurry for you guys. Is it clear when I go slower like this? Yes, no? Okay, that was the purple. Now I'm gonna to go to the indigo. Then I'm gonna to go to the light blue. Okay, can you guys see those three? Cause then I'm gonna blend those out. Yes, the, paper, the pencils are very soft on the paper. Sometimes when you first take them out, um, it might not lay off as fast and quick as once you have worn the, you know, the outside coating off the tip. So try laying it on its side or scratch paper, just scratch it a tiny bit. I don't know if you guys can really see, I'm gonna pull this up, all those little dusting particles I've got. That's what I mean right here. Don't get rid of those guys. That's all that beautiful pigment. All right, I'm gonna blend this section out. Just remember, violet under the wave, then you're gonna do your indigo blue, and then you're gonna do a lighter blue, okay? Now I start up by the purple first. Can you just see how that effortlessly is blending for me? And I'm gonna switch out fingers like this one, I'll use one finger for my darker colors. And then I'm gonna kind of do a little bit of circular yet also a 
circular to blend the lines. And then, but I like to do a little bit of horizontal back and forth to imitate the motion of the ocean. Kathy, we have a specific question about list of colors. Could you just call out or maybe hold up the pencils that you're using right now for color numbers? Okay, the violet is right here. It's 4411, which goes under the wave. And then the next color is the deep blue, the 4403 indigo blue. And then the lightest color right in front of the wave is 4465 light blue. Excellent. I'll put that in the chat. You want a light blue, a rich blue, almost like a royal blue, and then purple. And way up in the sky, the only thing was it was the light blue again. And then it was 4474 dark gray. The gray was up in the sky and right at the horizon line. Okay. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to repeat the same thing again in the next section underneath the waves is the purple, the violet. Remember, different amounts you don't want. The same amount everywhere. Uh, like that, hit and miss lines are good too. What I mean by that is a break in the color. Okay. And I'm going to go with my indigo again. In this section, we actually have more of the light blue. Oh, I need to sharpen. See, look how easy. Seed it totally. That's the secret. Make sure it's all the way in. And this is all you should have to do to get that gorgeous point with this sharpener. It's the little red all art sharpener, the S650. <clears throat> Yeah, when it starts scratching and it's not just laying off nice and pretty and heavy, it means you need to sharpen it. <clears throat> sure, you got a good amount of that dusting. And actually, I mean, I've got a decent amount of pressure I'm using. The fact that I can so effortlessly blend these really speaks to the quality of these pencils. And also they're not super hard, you know, which allows it to lay off and have all that extra beautiful dusting that I can just start blending like this. Effortlessly, even with my finger. And I'm bringing a little bit of that purple up into part of the waves too. I find working with pastels so relaxing. I really do. See, they that just Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, since we only have an hour, we have a lot to do guys. So, um, don't feel rushed. When I'm starting another step, I want you to stop and watch it because you can go back and rewatch this over and over and over again. 
Okay. Next thing we're going to do is you can tell I've lost a lot of my waves. So waves have, they're not just all solid white. We are going to, like, I already love the fact that we're much brighter here than we are there. This one has started to be established. So this is why I listed so many different erasers. Um, I'm going to start out with our gum eraser. Um, I broke this one in half so I could work just in small amounts. And I'm not, I'm just doing medium pressure because I only want to lift a little bit. Can you see how suddenly that wave is starting to look more realistic? And remember on your extra piece of paper, when it when it's not lifting, it just means you've got to take it off. It's literally picked it up and it's just laying on top of it, okay? And it's like I had too much coffee. I don't want a straight line. Let's see, I'm gonna pull that up closer so you can see. You see how it's not a straight line? So it's making it look like in that white cap, there's more than one value. Yes, no, maybe so. How do we determine which eraser to use? Um, that's gonna come in time, okay? It's first time you've kind of used them. You're gonna know how much pressure to use, how much to lift. Now I started with that one a little bit. Now I'm gonna switch out to the black 18 and lift some areas with that. And remember, I'm hitting and missing because I do not want them all the same value, okay? That gummy eraser almost effortlessly picked it up. It picked up a little more than the black eraser. Now I'm gonna switch over <clears throat> to my ES20, okay? Yeah. And you're gonna find this one almost effortlessly is gonna pull it out too. And less is more. I mean, I will probably come back once this is um, further developed and I might choose to even lift more. Now I'm going to erase. Can you see how, I'm gonna lift it up again. Can you see how I have all these different values right here shows it. Really bright, not as bright. That's what makes it look more real. And I might even in a real precise area, pick up my BM2, like right here, I wanna establish a line. And I wanna make this a little brighter up here. I will probably do a little more over here too. I sort of look at it as a whole. And that's what we're gonna do for starters. Then I'm gonna move down to this one, do the same thing, start with my gummy racer. See how that almost effortlessly lifted that? Sometimes I want it brighter on the back side, and sometimes I want it brighter right in the front. This gummy racer of ours is just amazing. I really, I gotta be honest, I did not use a gum eraser that much until I tried Generals. It is, it's just amazing. See, we want all different values in here. So I swap out which one I'm using. I could have just used one, but you know, part of what uh, really adds to a piece is subtle value exchanges. And you create that sometimes when you deposit pigment, the other times it's when you take it off. I don't know if you guys can see, can you see all the different values within the light areas? Yes, no, maybe so.
I noticed somebody asked where you'll be able to view the video um, right on michaels.com. Okay, someone asked if a kneaded eraser would work. Um, kneaded erasers also work very well for lifting, altering, and changing the value within um, areas of a design. Kneaded doesn't necessarily lift all the way to the white of the paper, especially with the pastel. That's when you want to come in and use the racers that I listed. The ones that I listed will totally lift out in any medium, okay? So we're gonna stop right there with that. I will, and then the next step is, you probably were all wondering why I asked you to have a charcoal white pencil. Um, charcoal white pencils will add whites within an area in a charcoal, in a pastel, um, but, I found this nifty little trick that, and you notice I have tape on the end of this one. I only wet one of mine because you're really not supposed to wet this pencil. Um, I'm actually weakening the core because that water's wicking up it. So months down the road, when I go to sharpen it, um, it's not gonna wanna sharpen, it's just gonna break off. It's just had water introduced to it so many times, like hundreds of times, that it did weaken the core. Okay. But look what this does when I wet it. It becomes a bright white liquid. Now watch what happens when I put that white on top of the rest of the white. Let me lift. Kathy, I know you're um, trying to squeeze in a lot, but if you can, yeah, that would leave a um, little more moments of pause. We're still getting a lot of feedback on the focus. So I think when you stop movement, it helps. Right. Awesome. Can you see that one little spot there where it's so much brighter? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay. Is this helpful too when I just hold it so you can see the purple went into the blue darker blue and then to the light blue in all three areas. Yes, no, maybe so. All right. I am I apologize guys. I'm I'm baffled. I do so many zooms and when it's clear on my end, it's usually clear on yours. I don't quite know what is happening here. They're asking about the white pencil. If you want to tell them about the 558. Yes, um, <clears throat> that was the charcoal white pencil that I, um, the reason I didn't use a pastel white is this dissolves better to give me a bright, bright, bright white, which I want in just a few areas. I'm gonna put it in a few more for you. I don't know if you, is it showing how much brighter it is? Yes, no? I just think, can you see right here? Is that brighter for you guys too? Where you can see where I did that liquid? All right. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm wondering if I'll have a better connection if I get it off my phone. That's the only thing I can think I've done different. Okay, does that seem to be better? Well, I've got the phone off now, so I am totally out on the phone. I am just here. I think part of it might be the subject matter and the way it's focusing. And I, uh, we all, we do apologize that some of you are having clarity issues, but I think you should just keep moving forward, Kathy, so that we can, um, yeah. Yeah. 
we will look into this after this class and hopefully it gets better for the next one, but I think you should just continue. I think we can see the difference where the bright white pencil is. Um, so thank you. A lot of this, a lot of people are saying they can still see it and we should just keep moving forward. So thank you. All right, see, look right here, stop and watch. Can you see how suddenly these waves are getting so, just that extra little foamy lift? Yes, no, maybe so. Someone respond. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So this is an extra little trick. Whenever I do this, people are going, what? I've never saw something like this. I love when an accident turns into um, a technique that I can use. I was sketching in a boat and my kids tipped my boat thinking, you know, boys thought it would be funny. And I was furious until I picked up this white pencil and it just liquid all over me. And I thanked them. So that is how I got those bright, bright whites in the background. And if I wanted more of a cloud in an area, do you see how now I can further develop my clouds with that wet pencil? Can you guys see that? So that's why I wasn't that worried about my cloud. Now, if I have an edge I don't like, I just take any acrylic brush. See how I'm kind of tapping the, just the edge down a little bit. So do you see how now the, I, I really reinforce that cloud? And I would probably do that in a few more areas when all was said and done. I, I always wait to do corrections or additions until I have the whole thing done. Because you're gonna notice that this is even gonna start looking different when we get down here, okay? Okay, now we're gonna go for our- Couple questions, sorry. Will the white work without wetting it? And when you were erasing, was it the dark blue portion? When I was erasing. No, I was erasing where my, um, okay, here's a perfect example. Here is the wave down here, remember? First we put the purple under the wave and then we did the blue and then we did the lighter blue, correct? In the wave area is where I was erasing. I cover the wave area with just a tiny bit of color because waves do have a little bit of color in them, okay? All right, now this actually doesn't look like it blended on the screen, but it did. See, this is when I'll do circular motions to get rid of any prominent line I don't want. You know, I kind of like the fact, um, it's to me, it doesn't look like it's um, transferring or communicating the same to you as, you know, because I'm seeing all these gorgeous colors. So I don't, may, it might be the internet. Okay, now I'm gonna teach you something totally different. For the sand, I want it very light. So when you draw with the pencil, you get more condensed pigment. When I want thinner layers of it, then what I do, this is why I told you to have a sanding paddle. If you don't have a sanding paddle, you can use an emery board, but I position it over it. Don't go like this and dump it. Position it over because then you're in charge of where it falls. So now I'm taking my dark gray pencil. Can you kind of see what I'm doing? All those little pigment particles that I told you, don't blow them off. That is pigment that you can work with. Okay, now take a clean one. I don't want my blue finger. I'm gonna do a clean one. And you're gonna see it's much lighter in value. And sometimes when I have these chunks, I'll purposely press a little, maybe go like that a little. It's gonna leave a little more of a mark. 
They're asking if the pencil, the pastel will cover the pencil lines. Uh, yes. Yes. This Because remember, we're going to use the eraser right here. We just want some areas to have sand. Okay. Because we kind of want to leave a little bit of a path they're walking in. Okay. And this is one time you can blow the excess off. So you see how much softer it is by not drawing with it? Can you see how that's darker than this? Because that's where I kind of pressed in and smushied to show you. Okay, that's going to be, be covered up anyway. So. so this is what we want for round one. Again, seat your pencil all the way in it. A few turns and you will be good to go. Now I'm looking at this and believe it or not, I'm changing my mind. Just maybe right at the wave line, I'm gonna put a little more gray. Yes, if you go to the Michaels library, any video, any class that has been taught, you can rewatch the video. I made a little darker right there, and I'm going to take that finger. A, it'll really show up the wave down there a little more, but I also wanted to show you the difference of drawing with it as opposed to grading it. See how much softer it is? You guys finding this fun? You got a um, so cool. <laughs> And remember, guys, it's your first try. Okay. Let me give you a few seconds. But I'm going to share some more tips with you. So let's say I wanted the blue to show up more here. This is when I wouldn't draw, I would grade it because there's less pigment to try to control. If you wanted to say, oh, I wish it was a little darker in a few spots. Can you kind of see that? And I picked up the wrong pencil. I wondered why, but that's all right. That's all right. I picked up the violet. I'll just kind of put it over it. And see, but this is an example of why I wait to do anything. Because now that I added it there, look, now I got to add some here or here. Anytime you change one area of a design, you usually end up having to adjust in a few other places too. So that's why I always say in the beginning, when in doubt, don't. Okay. When all is said and done, you're going to see where if at all, you're going to need a change. Because see, I changed there. So now all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I really should have some here. So this is a valuable learning lesson. I would have liked it better the other way, but I'm trying to give you as many tips and tricks so you will have success every time you're working with these, okay? All right, now I'm going to get back real quick to the charcoal white pencil again. Nope, Kathy, you jumped the gun. You gotta, you gotta get some of these little wave things happening here. Really, it's it's the waves that make this, guys. It really is. And I'm kind of just smushing it. I mean, I'm really trying to get this little stuff where it sort of just comes up a little bit, okay? 
and in one or two spots, I like to even bring it down a little more into the sand. I, I love the ocean. I spend hours just watching all this stuff. This is what I meant by it went sort of down in there because sometimes a little bit of the foam goes further out into the, the sand area. Are you liking working with pastel? Yes, no, maybe so. See how that changes everything? The waves are what just really make this. And I'm rushing this one a little bit because I'm gonna try to get the, the bright down here too, okay? To me, the bright white is what really pops these. And again, the secret is I lifted different amounts of that light pigment I put in the wave area with different erasers. The more values, even light lights make add so much dimension and interest, guys. Okay, there's those ways. Just confirmation, Kathy, on which paper you're using. You know, I just used a 70 pound drawing paper. If I would have used a heavier weight or um, a, a tone paper that is really tone paper is for charcoal and pastels usually, um, I would have had even more, more control. Things would have blended even easier. But I always try to work on the most inferior when introducing a new medium to show everyone just the versatility and what might go wrong on the lower weight paper, how you can correct it. This is just 70 weight drawing paper. If you have a higher weight, I highly suggest it. But sometimes with the new medium, you've just gone out for the first time, you really don't know what to look for. So that's why I did it this way. Then there's another, there's been a couple questions about pastel sticks. Some people have asked, can you use the sticks instead? And then one person asked your personal preference. Do you like pencils better than the sticks? Um, sticks lay, sticks are more compressed. They are meant to lay off just a tiny amount of pigment. The majority of the time we use sticks is when, if we don't use a pencil and we're, you know, drawing in our design, or if we're coming in a tight area and we just want a detailed line or something like I might've used it in the grasses. <clears throat> However, sticks have a coating on them too. Let's see if I got some sticks here to show you. Um, what I found works with sticks is I sharpen them and then the pigment lays off faster. So that is a way that you could work with sticks, but sharpen them or grate them. I don't have any handy here real quick. That's why I love working with these pastel pencils, the amount of loose pigment that I can get off of them, whether I'm drawing or grating, it's crazy. Okay, gotta keep moving. This is the beginning of my groundwork now. So I'm going to take, and I'm gonna be grading again. I'm going to take some 4453 burnt sienna and some 4417 yellow ochre. I want to get a little bit of color in here. Now, remember what I said, less is more, right? Less is more. I'm gonna get a little over my rocks. And that was the yellow ochre, the 4417. Get a different finger. Trying to create a little bit of light source and, you know, like we're walking through the path to get up to the water. 
So again, less is more. Now I'm going to take some of the burnt sienna and do the same thing. Colors aren't that much different. Take my finger again. Not so much circular this time. Okay, can you kind of see how I'm trying to give a little bit of horizontal movement, okay? If it's too harsh, remember we can go circular, that's gonna soften that out a little bit, okay? So we're gonna do that much for starters. Then I'm going to take a little bit of my, come on, where'd you go? Here we go. I'm gonna take some of my Van Dyke Brown 4451 and maybe put a little bit of that here and there in my rocks as well. That way I'm not starting out totally white. I've got some colors that I can work with. Okay. Next, I'm going to take that same Van Dyke Brown and where the bushes are. That is where I am going to put some Van Dyke Brown. So I have a little depth back here. Do it on both sides. Okay. Now here, I'm just gonna sort of go like this. You see how I did that? I'll do this one, closest to the ground, and then I'm sort of just See how I gave the first start of my, my bushes? Yes, no, maybe so. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of the 4481 black. Less is more, trying to get this really more down, down right by the rocks. So we got a nice dark base there and then maybe just a little here and there. And I kind of smush this first for starters. Get this nice and dark down here. See how I kind of smushed? And then I'm going to just go up in a few spots. I'm just trying to establish some depth. Okay. And I'll do it on this side. Especially with pastel, a lot of it is you're giving the illusion. Okay. Now I'm going to pick up my BM2 pen style eraser. Love, love, love this little guy. You, you just push in when you want to extend it. If you get it too long, hold the top in and just bring it back down, okay? I want to make sure all the pastels off. And now you want to go all different directions, okay? See how I'm starting to establish? I would be lost without this pencil. I would truly be lost without this pencil. Bring those way up almost into the water on this side. You're gonna want, now I'm gonna quit developing this one because I really wanna get to the rocks and everything. Every step I'm doing here, you're gonna do there. So you had the Van Dyke Brown and the black graded and just smooshed up for starters. 
Here's the next step. Remember, I am pulling and you want them all different directions and all different widths and lengths, okay? Can you see that? Then I'm gonna come back. I, you can work that while I resharpen my burnt sienna and my Van Dyke Brown. Those are the next two colors I'm gonna be putting back in. Now again, I use my brush but you can use a cotton ball with a light flick to get all your little eraser debris off, okay? So I'm going to be working with Van Dyke Brown and Burnt Sienna, okay? I'm gonna start putting more lines in, all different directions, widths and sizes. You see that? That's the burnt Van Dyke Brown. And I'm gonna do some burnt sienna and I want these a little thinner. So I'm going to sharpen my point more. Is it clear? Are you, are you able to see more now? I see it pretty well, but there might be some connections that aren't coming through, but it looks good on my end. We're getting a lot of questions or a couple of questions about the Factus pen eraser. I just linked to it. And um, could you just hold it up one more time so they can see the name of it? It's the Factus BM2 mechanical pen eraser. Mm -hmm. This is the one I use when I really want it get in and do details, small areas. All right. So I put those two colors in. I can see I want a little more dark in here. So I am just, this time I'm drawing. I'm gonna show you all different ways to work with this. I'm gonna get a few more darks in here because this is another way I've shown you your fingertip. And notice, did I fill it all in? No, I want some of those previous colors to show. So now I'm gonna use a blending stump because this is too hard for me to get in here. I kind of lay it on its side. I don't work off the tip. The tip is going to just grind it in the one spot. If you work off the side, you're gonna notice it's gonna blend it out. See how that gave that a little more depth? You guys learning something? Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> you made my day. Okay, plus when you blend it out, you see how it's darker here? And as I go rrr, 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 and pull it towards myself, I get more than one value. The more subtle values you can create with less colors, the less chance that you're going to end up with something that is um, dull and kind of muted. How do you get color off a tortillion? Okay, basically, <laughs> I use my clothes um, and I get the majority off of it. It is um, wound up paper, so you're never going to get all of it off. You're going to notice I have different ones. Um, for each color family that I'm kind of working with. I mean, I've, I've just always done that <clears throat> when I know I'm going to be using the same colors over and over. But otherwise, paper towel or Kleenex. You don't want to use a baby wipe. Again, this is paper, okay? All right, now we are going to, oh, I'm going to take my ES20 and I'm going to partially lift color out of some of each rock. You notice I'm not taking it out everywhere, am I? Okay, gotta build your rocks.
See how that's starting to establish them? Now I'm going to take some beige. I'm gonna take some light flesh and just in a few areas, just kind of draw it in and I'm not blending it out, okay? This I'm just kind of tapping the color in a few spots. just to get another color in them. Let me bring that up. So now you can see white. Here is the spot where it is. Here's the spot. Here's the spot. Just putting in and down here, it was over a darker color. So see, it's a lot different. Now I need to <clears throat> Van Dyke Brown. The quick question, Kathy, we have three minutes to go. Someone's asking what you would use to sign your work when you're finished. Okay, <clears throat> sometimes I would take my Kimberly HB or 2B pencil. Sometimes I could really, really sharpen my pastel. Sometimes like this, this was just with the Pigma Micron pen. So and then we of are course down. we're getting questions about sealing it at the end. All right, you can use things like Krylon, um, spray fixative, or what I like to do with my pastels. <clears throat> and let me see if I have one here. I like to burnish the old fashioned way. And how I do that is, um, uh, I take a piece of tissue paper that you would just get from you know, the dollar store, any kind of tissue paper that ties or clothing is wrapped in. And what I do, and then I take a metal tablespoon and a, or soup spoon, you want a nice surface area. And what I do is there's a shiny side, which you don't want, there's wax there the dull absorbent side. And I will put it right here to show you. I hold it flat. A smear is excess pigment laying on top of the paper that uh, has nowhere to go. So by burnishing it like this, I'm pushing the particles into the paper and what the paper can absorb, the tissue paper does, and then it won't smear on you. Okay. All right, we only have a few seconds. I'm gonna talk you through the rest, okay? You are going to take the Van Dyke Brown pencil. See what happens when suddenly we're going to outline this a little bit. Just in small areas, you never wanna go all the way around. See how suddenly, they stand out more. And then you're gonna take your autumn gold on the top. Let me focus that. And then the wet charcoal white pencil there. See how suddenly they all look different? Wet charcoal, put some autumn gold or yellow in these areas, as well as a little more burnt sienna if needed, okay? When you come over here, you're just going to put a few little marks. You notice that bright, bright white again, okay? You gotta have a little bit of this down here. Again, use your little tortillion, kind of smooth and smush that down a little bit. Okay, same thing with these. You're not gonna wanna leave that totally See how I'm kind of softening those edges? Yes, no, maybe so. I have to put the yellow still in here. These are just a slow lift out process, okay? Then I do the wet white in here as well. It's 
slow buildup, but can you see how they're starting to look like? I'll go ahead and put some of this in a few of these to see. See how they're starting to look more? Now they're starting to look more like rocks. And then it's a lot of little grading. It really, really is a lot more little grading or it's the addition of a few more colors. I like to put my yellow in a few spots. I would bring more of the burnt sienna in. Burnt sienna, where did you go? Here you are. A lot of this, you kind of just got to wait until you get to that point. You, now this, you could have either graded or draw with, okay. Then I notice maybe I do want a little bit maybe here. Secret is we are trying to get it look like there's a path going up there. Can you see that? And that is the only difference. You notice once I had it all done, I put some of the liquid white here and here, a little bit there, a little bit down here. But that will be after you finish these which is tedious. Now I'm gonna come back maybe with a little bit of black in a few spots. These take a long time because you're slowly building them up. And you're gonna notice once this white dries and you, if you put yellow on top of it, that's what makes some of those that are super, let me bring it up here and let it, See some of the yellows in the very front are much brighter. It's because you put the yellow over the, the wet white once it dry. <clears throat> I wish we had a little more time guys, but you got the gist of it, right? Yes, no? How many of you think you're gonna do a lot more projects with pastels? Excellent. See, look at, see how those yellows are getting brighter. Can't do more because that's still wet. Any last minute questions? I wanna thank you guys for joining me. I really, enjoyed myself. I hope you did too. See how the more I add, yeah. it makes a little bit of a difference. Pick any of the colors in the sand for your rocks if you want to. Rocks can be you know, all kinds of different earth tones. As you can see, the more I'm playing with them, they're starting to come to life more, right? Any last minute questions, Kirsten? Quick question, how long did it take me to do the original? It took about an hour and a half. Well, no, the original took longer because I was figuring it out. Um, I always, the day before a class, just do one again for it to freshen me up. And it was about an hour, almost an hour and a half. So that's why I had said, okay, I'm going to make sure we get through all of this. This is just repeating what you learned there. So it did take me a little longer. The 
What's the difference using chalk and crayons? Um, these are, uh, well, crayons, I don't know what you're talking about, like pastel crayons. Um, I always work with these pencils because again, the, the soft, dry uh, pigment, you know, all that dusting, all that wonderful pigment to effortlessly blend. You would have to use different techniques, more of that layer on layer, blocking in color, colors over color with crayons usually, because they're not that soft, compressed pigment, dry pigment. Does that make sense? Um, can we still roll here? I have no idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just keep working a little bit until she says class is over. Thanks so much for joining us. That's Nicoria. Can you comment on that? Oh yeah, I was gonna say. Um, it's usually whenever you know you're ready to end it. I can end it. Well, I'm trying to at least get my rocks finished. What these rocks need is they need a little more depth underneath them. So if that happens to you, just watch the difference very lightly. Not a lot. You see how I'm putting black in a few areas? See how that's popping them a little more? Sometimes you have to do something like that, depending on... I didn't have to do this as much with the other ones, but I also noticed I had put more colors down right away in the other ones. I didn't have to work so hard to get some depth under here. See how that's changing them too? You don't want a lot. We don't want it necessarily on all of them. That's another little hint that'll start popping those and making those a little more dimensional. You're gonna find every, you know, every time it's it's a little different. So I always say watercolor and actually pastels are a lot like kids. You know, sometimes they do exactly what you want them to, and sometimes they just have a mind of their own. And if you're patient, they usually turn out beautiful. See how these are starting to look more dimensional? Yes, no, maybe so. And adding additional colors around them out here will pop more too. For instance, like this little guy, it's almost disappearing. I would give him some yellow first, but then I also need to get color behind him because he sort of just fades into it. It's white on white. So if I get some color behind him, and then if I use that wet charcoal white pencil, it's gonna, he's gonna pop. You're suddenly going to see him. See the difference? He just needed a little color behind him so you could notice him. Starting to look like rocks? Yes, no, maybe so. Again, the rocks, the, the ocean was nothing. What's the hardest is getting these guys to look super dimensional. It's really lots and lots of layers coming back in, okay? And like I said, throw in a little more color in a few spots. Uh, maybe a little more there. And I do really like this. So now I'm just gonna take the charcoal white pencil, bring a little more white in a few spots for you. Kind of a light source thing. Can you see these little areas of white I'm bringing in, how they make a difference? Yes, no? It's 
that's about how far it went. And then I had to wet it again. Same thing over here. Highlight a little more of the white in a few spots here. It's, isn't it just amazing what this pencil, when you wet it, the difference it can make to really brighten something up? Someone's asking, start with the 12 or 24 color set, Kathy. If you even, I would say the 24 set. When, I mean, your 12 set has your, your, your basic primaries and earth tones, and then a few extra colors. The 24 set, what I love about this is I get several values in this of uh, certain colors, which make a difference in pastel. Like, you know, if I had this and this and this, I've got three to work with and the extra greens and the different hues of blue and earth tones too. Some are warm, some are more cool. You, the 24 set, obviously I pulled one. <laughs> um, it doesn't, you aren't limited. If you truly fall in love with them, you know, the 36 set is just like, you know, I. The 36 set reminds me of like when I used to get to go to the penny candy store. I want one of this and one of this and one of this and one of this. <laughs> um, but the 24 set, you can't go wrong. What was I using to create the dust or shavings? Again, I just used um, a sanding paddle, but you can use the good old fashioned cheap emery boards. All this really is, is um, sanding paper. And I noticed um, the nail files for fake nails uh, are more abrasive. Uh, the ones where you get like 12 in a pack um, are like for regular nails. Um, this grates faster than an emery board, but if you don't have one, you can use an emery board. And again, what I love to use this for is I mean, I just get all this beautiful, soft pigment. When I want something to look very soft or even several values. Now watch, see how I have more than one value in there? It's by how much I pressed. Where when you draw with that same pencil, gotta sharpen it again. It's going to lay down Darker, darker and one value, okay. Electric eraser for highlight, ooh, no. Electric erasers um, are, you have such a good chance that it is gonna end up just going right through that paper because this is thin paper. And another reason when you use these type of erasers, let's say I wanted to come back and put color in. Now see that I barely, if, I mean, I could totally erase. This is gonna show you a little bit of the versatility. Now I'm gonna barely. This is what I'm saying about the different values I can create. With any of our erasers, okay, I'm gonna do all of them real quick. With any of them, let's say I said, oh crap, I wanted to put more color down. I could just draw more color down because I have not compromised the paper. If you use an electric eraser, um, you know when you've washed your clothes too much and they start, um, um, is it piling? Is that what they call it? You know, you get the little nubbies. An electric eraser is gonna create little nubbies on your paper. So when you go to put this down, it's going to, you're going to see all those little nubbies. So that is why I strongly suggest you never use an electric eraser. I want you to notice this. Look at the color, how bright it is in an area that I totally erased. You see all the different values of yellow I have now even just by what little bit of previous pigment was down there when it interacts with the new one because they blend so easily together, 
you get to create all these additional hues. And that's how you, this one looks like it's further back in the design. And this one looks like it's closer to the viewing eye. So many fun things you um, can do and learn with these guys. Any other questions? Do you feel like I shared enough that you'll be able to finish this little guy? Yes, no, maybe so. Yes. Someone's asking when you're going to do another class. We will. Um, we don't have any scheduled with Kathy yet, but we will definitely be booking one maybe this summer or early fall. And then um, Julia um, Madalena, who's on the chat here helping us with general pencil, is teaching two different charcoal portrait drawing classes. I'll link to them in the chat. You guys do not... When you see her gorgeous work, do not be intimidated by it. I highly, highly stress <clears throat> that you sign up for her classes and take them. Um, she breaks it down and makes it look so easy. And she's a great teacher and so patient. I'm actually gonna tune in. I'm determined, you know, portraits are just not my thing. I'm florals and landscapes. And Julia consistently tells me, I can show you how, and you can do it. You know, we haven't found the time to do it yet. So I'm going to be one of her students, but we hope to see you in her classes. She's amazing. Any last minute. Thank you so much for joining us. If you got to get off, have a wonderful day. And we hope to see you in our next class for General Pencil.